What it do y'all, it's your girl Makeup and Travel and for today's video your girl is here to bring you another video in my 3 Looks 1 palette series. Today's 3 Looks 1 palette I will be using as the title suggests the Kaleidos Cosmetics Flower Punk palette. Um, I bought this on their like actual launch day. They took away the like pre-order but they had the launch day. I think it still came in relatively quick period of time and the packaging was impeccable. So I finally got this yesterday and I started recording of course today. So yeah, we're just gonna hop right into it and I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, so I am stupid excited and I am excited today because last night I got my Kaleidos Flower Punk palette and I just want to dive right on in. I did not take any photos for my Instagram. I did not do any swatches, not a thing. We're just going to dive right in. So I'm really excited to have some fun with the new palette. I've been taking some time to really play with the palettes that I already have, but I'm excited to play with this a little bit. Um, and I would love to see if this looks like a palette that I recreated, like a person um, commented so we're just going to dabble in and out um i really don't have an idea of what i'm gonna do we're just gonna play we're just gonna play so first in my crease today what i want to put is peach soju which is the like pinky transition shade and i'm just going to put this all in my crease and transition area i actually am going to go ahead and use this mirror um, I can't be bothered to take off the plastic, but we're just going to use the like mirror top um, so that I can actually see what I'm doing. I will say it's a really nice mirror. And if you don't mind holding your mirror um, and or if you're doing something like this where you're recording and forgetting to zoom in, then it actually is beneficial, honestly. this color is doing really really nice a really nice job at getting pigmentation but also blending it's doing a really good job at sticking to this primer i do have my mac paint pot and groundwork down in case you are wondering Ooh, I really like this. This reminds me of the shade in the Creepy Cute palette that, um, what's her name? That Butte Bean loves to use as a blush. This is what I envision that shade to be. Hopefully, it doesn't look like the image is being blown out too badly, I don't think. But it looks really nicely. Um, so I hope it doesn't look too pale. I'll, if it does, I'll try and change it in editing. Um, so this was my Refer PO7D. This is like a um, a temporary brush, like the one that you can prototype that. It was a prototype, so I don't know if this is still in their store, but I'm just gonna clean this off really quickly just by wiping it on a piece of paper. Um, and then what I think I wanna do is see if I can deepen that up with the shade golden age which is a pukey green with some yellow in there so I'm just gonna take the exact same brush I'm just gonna start my placement a little bit lower and just try and deepen out this look oh my god this is working out beautifully so far once again the pigmentation is really really nice extremely nice oh my gosh it's building and blending like butter okay so I'm not sure what it's looking like I'm gonna zoom out um, but I can see the difference in the two different tones I'm gonna take the plastic off it's if I'm gonna actually use this as a mirror I should be able to see in it like a mirror all right there we go um yeah this is doing really really nicely really nice job at blending um slowly so that is good then what i want to do is just have some fun placing um 
a little bit deeper of a shade you guys know I love to really deepen out my outer V and so I think for today what I'm gonna do is take Earthship and this is gonna go even lower um, I'm gonna use a really small tight brush this is a Sigma detail blender it is the E27 E27 yeah that and I am going to really just focus on getting this right where I want it because I don't want this to blend up too high and the crease and I also just don't want any mugginess not muggy miss not mugginess but like I don't want it to become muddy and for the shades to not be clearly defined so I'm just gonna take my time as best as possible and just draw out my shape and yeah I know you guys can definitely see that green sorry so I know you guys can definitely see that green the other two shades may have kind of gotten eaten up by the green and I will just go back and work on building those up again so I like how everything is slowly building together I think it looks nice cute or whatever now what I'm gonna do is take my ECM W21 brush I need to find Okay, I'm going to take my Isam W1 W21 brush and my NYX glitter glue and I'm going to cut my lid and prepare my lid for my shimmers. So, since I have a majority of greens on my lid, what I think I'm going to do is start off to try and bring some of that pink out of my crease and I'm going to go into the shade Stained Glass and I'm going to make like a cut in my crease. So, I'm going to highlight where I stopped my NYX glitter glue with this shade by just picking up a little bit on the tip of my brush and just going at that very top. So it's just going to be like a line ultimately at the end of the day at the top of this area. If you're like me and you know sometimes your line gets a little thick. In certain areas don't worry when you go to put that next shimmer on you can generally easily cover that up okay so my line is done on both eyes I really really like that shade what I'm gonna do now is just clean off my um, brush again and I think I actually am just gonna go ahead and go into the shade Sun Gazer which is the beautiful metallic foiled shade in this palette and this is going to go straight on my lid this is extremely foiled in case you were wondering if you're not a fan of wetting your brush or even some type of glitter glue or something like that from what I can tell just picking that shade up on this brush you won't have a problem this is definitely one of their metallics in this palette I do have a little bit of fallout on my face but it is okay it should come off because I did set my face a decent amount I guess not good enough all right so let's just go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other eye alrighty so this is looking very very nice um, what I'm gonna do 
is pull a pencil brush very quickly and I'm gonna take that pencil brush and take that exact same shade that I cut my lid with technically which is that stained glass beautiful beautiful pink and this is going to be my inner corner highlight I really like that shade and I think it does beautiful things for this eye look Rotten. Then I'm going to take my smallest brush that I used before and the darkest shade and it's going to go right against my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go into the shade Peach Soju, am I? Hmm. You know what, no, I'm just gonna take what's left on this brush and I'm just gonna blend out this lower lash line. I don't need to add any more color. I think that green is enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna hop off camera, finish up the rest of my base, finish up my eyes, and then I'll be back to show you guys the finished look. Alrighty guys, so this is the finished look. So yeah, this is the first look out of three. I had to just jump into this baby. I'm going to definitely do a three looks one palette and then I will be testing this a little bit more off camera so that I can do a full review. But thus far, these shadows feel exactly like the Caladius quality that I am used to and I am accustomed to and I am enjoying it thus far. So I hope you guys enjoyed look number one. Let's get into look number two. Alrighty guys, so I'm here to do look number two with y'all um, featuring my Caladios Flower Punk palette. And I think today I want to just do soft, ethereal, kind of girly. Not something I very much do a lot, but I'm really going to stick with these pinky tones in the middle. So first I'm going to go into that Peach Soju again. This is clearly going to be one of my favorite shades of this palette. I've already used it <laughs> once on camera with y'all and I loved it and I'm loving it already today. So let me get the top of this palette, which is also of course a mirror, just so I'm not looking down nearly as badly. And hopefully you guys can see better. I don't know. It is a soft pink, but like if I'm looking in the mirror, I can distinctly see where the pink is and I can distinctly see the difference between the pink and my primer. I can't tell, at least in the viewfinder, it doesn't look as distinct. I hope when I go back to edit this footage that you can clearly see the difference. There is some kick up in the pan, um, but I am using a natural hair brush. This is a Smith um, Cosmetics brush, it's 232. So do just keep that in mind. But I really like how blown out and kind of airy this looks. So I'm really happy with that. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do next, come on twist, let's, let's work together. I'm gonna go into a smaller brush. This one has a taper at the top, so I can use it a little bit more to concentrate where I want the shadow to kind of be placed. And I'm gonna be looking into the Neveru, I don't know, the Neveru, I don't know. I'm gonna put that in, and this looks to be like a mauve deep mauve shade. So I'm hoping that this will deepen up my pink in a really nice way hopefully who knows until we try it so i'm just gonna start applying and with this brush i'm not seeing as much depth as i was like i'm gonna just keep working with this for right now i do have of course tighter packed brushes that could give me even more kind of payoff but 
I didn't want it to be too, too much, but I wanted a little bit more than this. Okay, so like I said, I can see the depth, but it's not as like punchy as I personally would have enjoyed. So I'm just going to clean off um, one of my ColourPop brushes really quickly because I tend to use this a lot. I really like how it packs on shadow. And this is the ColourPop E9. And I'm just going to go back into that Nouveau shade just to see if I can get that area darker than what it is now. It doesn't look like it's really going to do much. Yeah, it just looks like that shade is just not going to provide the depth that I had hoped for. Which is fine, just something for me to know. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take the very first brush that I had and just blend over everything. Super simple. Yeah. Um, today I don't really feel like dealing with doing a cut crease so i'm just gonna clean off my acm w21 brush and we're not going to put on nyx glitter glue today i think for today what i want to do is just take that stained glass shade which i believe i put in my inner corner last time and this is going to go all over my lid and because i'm not doing a cut crease i'm not going to really focus on keeping this on my lid I don't care if it goes into my crease um, and I want it to kind of be very seamless in with those mats so when we get closer to the areas where the mats typically are I'm just gonna pat to blend it out instead of really focusing I will say I'm definitely getting quite a bit of fallout it's not that bad because this is honestly the same shade as my highlighter so it doesn't it just looks like I honestly went super ham and my highlighter down in my cheek and, you know, under eye area. Um, so maybe I should have foiled or sprayed my brush. And you know what? I can go ahead and do that. So for that, I'm going to use my Beauty Bakery um, setting spray, which is actually in my project pan. And if you're interested, I will have that up in the cards. Okay, so I just sprayed the brush a couple of times and now let's do that so clearly you're gonna get a lot more opacity doing that which I knew I also just was not pressed to get at the same time but you're also not gonna get any fallout which I am pressed about because I really don't want fallout and then I'm just gonna take the tip of this W21 brush and just lightly blend I'm not really pressed for it to be seamless but I also don't want it to be as structured as I feel like I just automatically do um so that it looks really really nice very very pinky ethereal um definitely not as kind of depth provoking as i wanted it to be but that's okay that is okay <clears throat> so now we're going to just do the exact same thing on this eye alrighty so now both of my lids are pretty much at the exact same spot for my lower lash line i'm actually thinking i'm gonna keep it very very um light and airy i do want to add a little bit of depth so i'm going to go in with my brown eyeliner which is from maybelline this is in their master precise skinny gel formula so i am going to put this actually in my waterline but i also want to put this just on my lower lash line as well i'm just going to add just a little bit on this outer edge And I know it may look a little crazy, but this is a very blendable formula. So just go with me for a little bit, okay? Um, now what I'm going to do is take a smaller brush. I believe I also used this yesterday. Let me make sure there's no weird color coming off of this. Um, this is the Sigma E27. Um, and what I'm going to do is go into the darker shade, which is the Nouveau. And this is what I'm going to use to blend out that eyeliner and just to add some depth alrighty so both um, areas have been blended out pretty pretty well now what I'm gonna do is just go back to that um, Smith brush I'm just gonna add just a little bit of product knock off a bunch of it 
and then just connect from top to bottom. I don't want too much eyeshadow down here. I really like how it's centered up top, but I also want it to be a little bit of balance as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna add on my liners, mascara, put on some lip products, and I'll be back to show you guys the finished look. Alrighty guys, so this is the finished look. And yeah, like I said, this is the finished look. I'm really enjoying look number two. I think it's literally soft, really ethereal, really cute, girly. Not something I do very often, but when I do wanna reach for pinks, you know, I go for it. So I'm really happy with how this look came out. Um, I think it looks kind of more on the naturally side, especially when you're coming into this palette and you're not expecting that. So I'm enjoying the first two looks that I've shown you guys. I will be doing one other look um, and then I will be doing a separate video to review because I do want to take a little bit more time with this palette because I did not take too much time prior to starting these looks. So that's it. I will see you guys in a day to see, to do look number three. Alrighty, so we're here to do look number three for this three looks one palette I did already prime but I primed a minute ago So I do need to just make sure to get all the creases out of that eyeshadow primer Um, I think the only shades that I have not played with on camera have been Carafil I'm Carafil chlorophyll um, and mint fever so I'm gonna really focus on those two shades and we'll see what other shades I add into the look actually it doesn't look like this primer really creased it just feels like it's a little bit drier than normal so we'll see how that affects um, my look overall and we'll just go from there so I'm just gonna clean off some of the brushes that I've used previously and I am just gonna go straight into the shade mint fever I feel like between the two shades that I have that I really want to use today this is going to be the lighter of the two so we're just gonna oh lord okay that's a lot of pigment um i just tapped off just a bit uh just because it was it was a lot so yeah i'm just gonna take my time and just blend It's looking really really nice just gonna do that on the other side as well of course all right so this is looking good too both eyes are looking really nice blown out which is what I like I like to see it I like to see it um, now what I think I'm gonna do hmm let us I want another blending brush, but not as, okay, yeah, we'll go with this. This is my Smith 230. Previously, I just used my Wayne Goss 16, and I'm gonna go into the shade Chlorophyll, and let's see what that does, um, whether it deepens out or just kind of blends in, I don't really know. So let's see. I think on camera it doesn't look as bad and it doesn't really look bad in person but if I was able to like go back and switch I would definitely switch the two shades I would definitely put chloroform in the outside and put mint fever as my deepener up shade but overall I mean I think it looks fine um, what I want to do today is I actually don't once again want to do a pressed or a cut crease I just really liked how yesterday it was so like flowy and just I really liked that especially right now it is hot okay I can't be bothered to do no cut creases so what I'm gonna do today I think I really want to play with these two shades again I really enjoyed those two shades so I think what I'm gonna do is take um aloe aloe cove and that's going to be my lid shade 
once again I'm not going to put any glitter glue down but I am gonna wet my brush I learned that from yesterday and I'm not gonna forget that mistake so just gonna go in with my beauty bakery spray just so that it solidifies on my lid and not under my eye And once again, I'm just going to kind of place it where I typically do when I am actually doing a cut crease. And then I'm just going to take the tip of this brush and just kind of blend, if you will. Just so that there's no real stop, start or stop and it just kind of flows. I'm really, really liking this a lot. So we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other eye just picking up product again <laughs> all right so it's looking super airy ethereal kind of um swamp queen type situation i'm really really enjoying it a lot um lower lash line today what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna stick with my smith 230 brush which was the smaller of the two brushes I used in my crease and I am just going to mix literally a combination between chloroform and mint fever on this brush just go back and forth one two one two then I'm gonna tap off the excess and that's gonna be my bottom lash line today Okay, so almost done with this look. Inner corner highlight today, I am gonna go and use the stained glass, which is the pinky shade, and that is going to be my inner corner today. I think I actually did the opposite yesterday, so. So, you guys get to see all of these shades in their various glories. And this looks honestly very similar to my highlighter today which if you're wondering, it is my Project Pan highlighter, the um, KVD one from my glitter palette. I don't remember the name. Anyways, so this is pretty much the finished look. Um, I am just going to take the time to add some liner. I think I want to do a similar thing to what I did yesterday. I'm going to take my Maybelline brown liner just add a very little line on the top rim and then add a little bit on the bottom do waterline tight line all of that do mascara finish up the rest of my face i need to figure out what i'm going to put on my lips and then i will be back to show you guys the finished look all right you guys so this is the finished look And like I said, this is the finished look. I really, really am enjoying it. I really like how like fall and spring and summer, I just feel very, very floral, very, very airy, ethereal, that type of stuff. Um, and so I think this was the perfect time for this palette to be created. Even though we get some of those murkier shades, yes, you can use those. And you saw in my first look, I definitely reached for those and I enjoyed them a lot. They gave you a more substance of a look and structure. I just felt I needed to do more structure. But these other five shades over here, I just feel more ethereal and just cool and breezy with them. So I really like that this palette came out right now. I think you can use this in a numerous different seasons. And thus far, I've really enjoyed the formulation. I'm gonna just take off the top just so I can talk about each shade. Each of the mattes I think are really, really nicely pigmented, blendable. I think they all can be used as like standalone shades on my eye and transition, deepeners, all of that. Some shades, of course, you know, aren't going to deepen up others like you're not going to get chlorophyll to really deepen up earth ship over here like that's not going to happen but i think all of the shades really hold their own on my eyes and i really hope that on camera yesterday you were able to see these two and that they were able to really hold my eye i really think that they looked really really nice overall the three different shimmer or metallic shades these two i would say are more of caladios's normal formula let me actually while i'm thinking about it i'm gonna find some of my palettes some of the more normal ones and even the previous um collaboration ones so that you guys can see kind of the similarities that i'm trying to describe give me one second Whew. 
that took a minute i had to search i have two drawers worth of palettes and it just it took some time to find them okay so i have my other three palettes my two kind of six pan and then my collaboration palette um that angela Canique was did so looking at these metallics and dual chromes and multi chromes i would say the two alcove and what's the other one stained glass these two are very reminiscent to these shadows in here the metallics in here you get the same kind of duochromy effect and the same texture as well so in case you've had this palette i think they're very similar to those in the like smaller panned ones i would say that honestly you're gonna get more of a similar so like the more textured of the two there's typically one that's more textured and it's a duochrome that's think of that texture for this one down here so it's gonna be a little bit flakier you're definitely gonna really want something to adhere to the shadow so that it doesn't go flying off your face off your eye and onto your face um very similarly to this one as well this one is definitely flakier than this one even though they're both pretty flaky and you really want something to really adhere that um that shade so overall this is definitely formulations from the brand that we've already seen and love to some extent i think that they all work really really nice these two right here are definitely dual chromes on my eye it's definitely looking a lot more green but there definitely is blue to it and you're not going to see it unless you're like staring at it it's really really nice same with this stained glass one there's definitely something else to it too it's pink but there's also like a gold to it these are really really let me do that these are really really pretty pretty ethereal smooth shadows i really like how they added them and i think had they just been normal metallics you really wouldn't have gotten some of the looks to look as beautiful as they did at least i wouldn't have this sun gazer shade i think it is outstanding but keep in mind once again you're really going to need something to get that shadow to adhere to your eye whether it is a glitter glue whether it's just you wetting your brush with like a setting spray or just water or something spritzing it, you're going to need something to get that shadow to adhere. Other than that, so far, those are kind of my thoughts. I would recommend this palette if you're interested in the shades. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to do before I left. All right, I think I'm done finding things. So when I did, I did um, uh, like reorganizing my eyeshadow palettes earlier this month and when i did it somebody commented saying that my palette that i reorganized looks similarly to the caladios one and this of course it just so happened that i ended up reorganizing my melt cosmetics palettes so i figured it'd be cool to show you the you know the size comparison all of that for the two palettes that i have and then also just so you can see the color um changes so on the bottom is my rediscovered coloring of my 420 and my smoke sessions and of course up top is the caladios as you can see the size of the pans are different the length of the pans are different and even the size of the palette is different so I also don't see too many similarities of course there's one or two shades like these lighter bluer tones and then these murkier shades of course but I still don't get any of the pinky shades mainly because I didn't pick up the whatever the pink palette was from Melt Cosmetics I just was not interested pink millennial I think that's what the shade the palette was I just was not interested and then just you know just to be fully all together this is the other shades of that same um color variation that i created and of course up top once again is the caladios palette once again different shades different colors different sizes in the pans all of the above yes they're both um they have similar like pressing like on the designs but like they're different at the same so overall like i said i would recommend this palette as of right now i do intend to definitely play around with this palette a lot more i want to get some more kind of solid thoughts um and i will be doing my best to get my thoughts completed on this palette for my favorites and fails even though i rarely talk about fails just because i'm not buying as much makeup so i'm not finding things that I think are fails. Anyways, it's going to probably come up in my favorites and fails for May 
right we're in may right yes we are so um just stay tuned for that and that's all i got for you guys if there's anything else that you guys want to see let your girl know um but that's all i got so i will see you guys in my next video which will be friday i think i know what i'm gonna do but i don't want to jinx it and not have the time to film it so i will see you guys on friday bye guys